The Image of Here and Now, The Scrapbooks of Edwin Morgan by Sasha Saban Callahan. Over the last year, I found it increasingly difficult to read. Instead, I've caught myself continuously doom scrolling, seeking out the latest horrors and veering from feeling enraged to despondent. As an antidote, I found the work of Edwin Morgan, the Glasgow poet, translator and educator, to be a point of stability during the pandemic. But rather than his writing, it's Morgan's scrapbooks that have drawn me in. The 16 volumes of textual intervention and collaged images Edwin Morgan began assembling as a young boy, solitary and with a magpie tendency, are a dizzy mix. They're a political, social and erotic history of the mid 20th century, rushing headlong and breathless from the rise of fascism in the early 1930s to the Cold War of the 1960s. They're also a flirtation with Dadaism, a homage to surrealism and a route map illustrating Morgan's development as a poet. Between the covers of each scrapbook are three and a half thousand pages of intricately positioned ephemera and found poetry, tracing significant events and cultural change over almost 40 years. The composition of the scrapbooks is multifaceted, but they often relate to and correspond with Morgan's writing. And there are recurring themes across the collection. Animals, architecture, religion all make repeated appearances, as do his optimistic view of technology and artificial intelligence. And by contrast, his dread of the nuclear arms race. The scrapbooks were assembled through the cut and paste method of collaging, using text and images clipped from newspapers, scientific and nature magazines, academic textbooks, and pages of poetry ripped straight from books. They also incorporate Morgan's own sketches, abstract designs, prose, and his handwritten notes and pagination. To describe the volumes as complex is an understatement. Taking just one example, Scrapbook 9, compiled from 1948 to 1954, consists of 503 clippings displayed over 320 pages. Edwin Morgan travelled widely to Africa and the Middle East during the Second World War, to Russia and the Eastern Europe during the Cold War, to the United States, to New Zealand, to the North Pole. The collages reflect this globe trotting, combining personal photographs with tickets, stamps, the detritus from numerous travels, charting a journey, an exploration between a social history of Scotland and beyond, a personal journey and an act of creation. Oh, and they're a catalogue of homoerotica, pop stars, footballers, astronauts and explorers lend dark glamour and gorgeousness through their distance from us. As a gay man living under the shadow of punitive anti-homosexual laws, the scrapbooks seem to be Edwin Morgan's way of confronting the casual and ingrained homophobia around him. Influences on Edwin Morgan's work as a collagist come from a wide range of sources, but the beyond reality of surrealism threads through the scrapbooks. The desire of surrealists to find magic and strange beauty in the unexpected and the uncanny, the disregarded and the unconventional, had an obvious resonance for him. Newspaper and magazine cuttings record stories of hauntings, of UFOs and sightings of the Loch Ness Monster and a blue moon over Glasgow. 
He also includes eerie events from his own life and handwritten accounts of strange coincidences and vivid dreams. Whilst Edwin Morgan was primarily a poet rather than a visual artist, there are discernible links between his news poems and textual interventions constructed from newspaper headlines. The use of images in the scrapbooks are a foreshadowing of his 1970s instrumatic poems, whereas Morgan says the poem must be presented in such a way as to give a visual picture of this event, whatever it was, as if somebody had been there with an instrumatic camera and had just very quickly snapped it. The scrapbooks are the invention of an inquiring, questioning man, eager to use images and words to create new work and construct new worlds. Dardaris Tristan Zara's description of cut-up logic, the poem will resemble you, sums them up beautifully. These cut and paste jewel boxes of 54,000 images, past lives and fragments of text and instrumatic poems suspended in time, ephemeral babies long dead, starfish washed up on nameless beaches, castles and goddesses, porcupines illuminated by the northern lights or nuclear explosions, connecting threads and themes woven between pages and across decades. Each time I look, I find something new to dazzle and intrigue and tantalise. Yes, Edwin Morgan's writing is beautiful and sensuous, but it's his scrapbooks which move and inspire me and have enabled me to create my own collages as the virus rages. When Edwin Morgan stopped compiling his treasury, in 1967, Scotland was on the brink of huge social change. The world was a different place and the schoolboy, living with middle class Presbyterian parents in Rutherglen, was now a poet and critic, embracing change and exhilarated by risk. The volumes themselves are a brilliant yet problematic legacy. On the one hand, they perform the function of many scrapbooks both as time capsules of the here and now, providing a snapshot of the past, and as a means of organising, categorising and interpreting history. But they're also the story of one man. Beyond that, Edwin Morgan's scrapbooks are caught in a web of constraints. His wish was to see them published, but issues over copyright have presented this so far. Now, digitalisation brings new challenges as deciding what will be retained, who will do it and who will have access to the end result is seldom neutral. One of the things which has intrigued me about the scrapbooks is how they conclude with the final volume, number 16, unfinished. What would I like to see? Freedom the freedom to create a response to those empty pages, to fill the gaps. This is the opportunity to give Scrapbook 16 a second life with new interpretations, not only of Edwin Morgan's poetry, but of a rapidly changing world, making sense from cut and paste just as Edwin Morgan has. Do you feel drawn to Edwin Morgan's writing, to his exploration of identity in the scrapbooks, when for so many years he had to keep his real identity hidden? Maybe you don't think of yourself as an artist, but collage is such an inclusive and accessible way to make wonderful art. So if you're a disabled person, please share your ideas for completing Scrapbook 16 through social media. 
Let's fill those empty pages from 1967 with the strange and beautiful from the present. If you'd like to join us, we welcome you. Just use the hashtag more than images em100 at Ed Morgan Trust. We can't wait to see your responses. Let's hold hands among the atoms.